Leo is welcome. Let your heart spread. This is for the end of October, second half of October. Using the Gilded Tarot Classic deck. My oldest deck that I have and my favorite. So Wednesdays, always Leo Virgo days here. Check out, if you haven't, from the weekend. You can find them on my YouTube page. Um, just put up uh, readings for all signs uh, for Mercury Retrograde. Just kind of... Uh, looking specifically with this reading, at if uh, you have someone that kind of is on your mind during Mercury Retrograde, or maybe always on your mind, or particularly crops up during Mercury Retrograde, it's not meant to be, this is the heart spreads for who you want to interact with. So this is like reading that person, you know you're not going to get back with them. It's like maybe the one that got away. I mean, you could be in a happy relationship with your soulmate and it still maybe bugs you like... About that one person who needs some kind of closure. I always think that energy in a love channel here is going to tell us a lot. What's wrapped up in that? Why'd that person get in their head? It, it, it's never about them, that's the secret. <laughs> it sounds weird to say that. Not really. When you start telling your lovers, no, it's okay, it's not really about you. <laughs> like they'd be like, oh God, I hope I did. No, 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 you're fine. It's not really about you anyway. Yeah, then you know you're on it. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so it's really not about them. <laughs> but this is about them. Who are you thinking of? Who's on your mind? Who's in your heart? You don't necessarily have to be with them. Wow, the high priestess. So this shows where you're at. I like to get a baseline. I've got an idea where you're at, like on your own, separate from anybody else. And you're coming in with the high priestess. Um, so... We'd be speaking now to a Leo that's uh, very intuitive, uh, emotional, probably spiritual. You've probably been doing the spiritual work. Probably consider yourself a spiritual person. Um, you probably got your crystals out for the full moon, and this area is what I'm hoping you did. But man, with some strong uh, energy. I don't know why it's so complicated. I'm an astrologer too. We'll make it real easy. You gotta look at the aspects, but. You know, what's the moon? Emotions, unconscious, your eyes see, where you're vulnerable, your soul. Um, and what's Aries? Just do it. So put those two together. That's kind of what we got <laughs> by aspect, house. <laughs> and uh, so you may know this being a high priestess because you could be a, a tarot reader yourself or an astrologer yourself or definitely be someone that's into that. Um, you probably... Um, trust your intuition here this is showing up where you're at so that's good i'm in that position to not really trusting it it's this weird game i'm having to play now with myself and uh, i kind of get it now it's like spirits like you can't fake this one <laughs> you can't fake any of the spirit tests that's the thing are you fool everybody else you can probably fool yourself but you can't fool spirit i found out you know so i just have to really believe but i think this is a person that does believe that believes in your if you have an intuition about something you don't shoot it down with your head uh, you know and put it out of its misery you like understand that that's a gift and uh, you probably very much go with it if this is your reading um bottom of the deck seven of pentacles i read that lightly in the heart spread um probably some kind of overall energy around reciprocation one or both of you it's very common usually feeling that you didn't get it Judgment. Now, both of you are coming in with major arcana here. And for your person, remember, judgment comes before the world. So this shows where you're at. I, I like this energy, by the way. Um, but it can also show not only that, that you're this kind of person, you could be under the influence of a strong Neptune uh, transit. I am. <laughs> Neptune is very powerful right now uh, in Pisces and uh, it has been for a while. But it's at a very, it's in the third deacon now. It's just really uh, getting up. Now your person's coming in with judgment. Um, they may be on the verge of some kind of breakthrough, uh, leveling up, uh, crashing the glass ceiling. However it works out. Um, it's just like being called up too. So they could, and it kind of works because you, you're a spiritual guy, spiritual girl. And here's this person um, this could be, comes to mind, this could be someone that came to you for help initially. Hmm? Yeah, and not help like, uh, oh my God, I'm my own worst enemy. It's like help like, you know, I, I'm, I'm banging my heart chakra, but I can't get it, the kundalini energy to rise any higher. 
and I think I might need some help with this, you know, that kind of come to you, if you know what I mean, a metaphor, I like it though, mature people, spiritual people, wow, now this is how you're feeling, <laughs> towards your person and I'm laughing because I'm a spiritual guy but I like uh, sex and I you know I like it hot out of Mars and Sag um, this is you're going into the reading with this towards your person so make no mistake you know you're you're not uh, mo monastically inclined either one of you probably if you're having this um, you know uh, when it comes to you, your uh, physical self be fully functional normal uh, sense of uh, sexual desires and stuff and that's uh, Mars energy and uh, night energy uh, it can very much be being that you're Leo that this, this is kind of should be natural energy for you Sag fire you know it's, it, it's tricky to say because you never know where you're um, you may not have any of your personal planets in Leo I mean your moon something else your Mercury Mars and Venus could be in something else but you know, I would think that this would be like a, a natural feeling for you. Well, and wow, are they being different? This is very, I, it just came to me so fucking hard. This is number 20 and the world is 21. And this is what's going on here. This is emotionally them kind of backing it down. Um, they may be having sex with you. I don't know something like that could be having a relationship with you But you being intuitive you would have to feel this But you are so good that maybe you even understand what I'm saying We'll see as we go along here because I think that this person consciously or unconsciously intuitively at some level they understand that they need a moment that they're at this point of, I feel this is myself, I feel this so strong. Lionscape, the winter solstices are coming, um, and eclipses, I mean. And by the winter solstice, um, I think it's going to be a, a whole different story. But I think it could be that close kind of energy. Uh, but they're just sort of emotionally withdrawing. And also, it feels like um, they need this energy, it's emotional energy, uh, to somehow finish a transformation remember they're they're heading towards the world they're leveling up um and again i'm not sure if they're conscious of it but what they're doing is they're kind of keeping back emotionally some energy for their own transformation to drive their own process right now i got a feeling there's like awareness in this look at you with justice so we got ju judgment and justice now, this is in the position of advice from spirit for you in this relationship. Wow. I mean, it, it, if it wasn't for the fact that it's advice from spirit, it may also be waiting on a marriage. That could be part of what this advice is to you. Uh, I mean, may, really waiting on a divorce, what I mean to say. I mean, it could be what's holding them up, what needs to, part, but I, that would only be part of it. There's something very emotional, very internal with them. Um, I almost get to feel maybe they talk to you about this too. But I get the feeling with this too, and I see they're coming in with judgment. Is this is you really understanding that there's something karmic going on here, like karmic going on with you guys and karmic going on with them. And, you know, uh, maybe they did come to you and say, I need this help. Maybe you immediately got it. You're the high priestess. And, you know, maybe you told them, you know, I'm really interested in you, but I think we need to talk in three months and not do it right now. I mean, that's respect. Respect for that. If that's the case. That's that's the high priestess. <laughs> you, you're not, you know, I'm not even going to talk about it. I know. Here's what I know. We're going to have a shot at it after the verse of the year, and we need to do our own things until then, right? If they roll with that, then good on them, you know? That means they understand there's a connection. Now, their advice is the Eight of Swords, and I think, I don't know if they're cross-watching, but if you want to share it, but maybe you can relate to this and talk to them about it. But, you know, it, this is all about this. Whatever's going on, it's in their heads. It's something deep. So it's more than like a divorce. That could be part of it too. 
Um, but it's something they're hanging on to, some thought pattern, something very negative. Um, and I mean, I guess with you being the high priestess, you maybe understand almost energetically, like, like I don't, you may actually just say this to them, some fashion say it, like, I don't want that energy, like I want you, and you know, I think I might have something with you, and I'd like to get to explore that with you, but I don't, I don't want this energy to come with you. You know, I, I don't want this energy. I don't want eight of swords in my house, in my home, in my heart anymore. You know, I dealt with that. And eight of swords is exactly the kind of thing. They got, it's like you, nobody, a hundred people can stand over and yell at them the truth and tell them what to do and when to do it exactly right. It does no good because they got figured out. Don't chill alcoholics for decades. It's something you've learned to understand. It's like just because you know the answer, it really doesn't do other people a lot of good when it comes to these emotional things. Because the whole point is we have to go through the process and learn through relationships, which is why I do Relationship Channel. Relationships are matter. Seven of Swords. I'm seeing this purely as strategic thinking. It's coming between Justice and the Eight of Swords. And it's like um, they're... It's, they're looking back over their shoulder, of course, what the Seven of Swords does. Um, but there's kind of this protective energy, too. I really think this is kind of like what I was just saying. This is you being very strategic and really understanding the, you could call it kind of eighth house stuff that's going on here. It could be stuff with them going on since early childhood, negative uh, thought uh, patterns, um, um, you know, um, self-sabotaging behaviors projections and you know you're just all aware of it with the seven of uh, swords and to me this may be a weird thing to say i feel like like this could be i'm a little fuzzy on the twin flames okay this if there is twin flames i could see this kind of being that way and you would definitely be the the one that's woke here and this would be your person that's asleep. And if, 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 that, if that is true, if it's, if it's a rational paradigm and it exists, and I think this is sort of true with soulmates, but maybe I'm different, it kind of gives you license to dabble in their life a little bit. You're still going to need to tell them. And like normally it's not your business to say to someone, uh, you know, something like you need time to heal. You're quite, it's sort of like saying you're not really good enough for me, I don't want that negative energy, but I might entertain you if you kind of get your shit together and get back to me in the future. And But here you are, I think, like, either doing that or you're being asked to do that. This is in the position of advice for relationship as a whole. So, um, all I would say is, like, I, I got no problem Sagittarius, Jupiter, Jupiter. No, you, Sagittarius, we don't need science. Like, we get right and wrong. We understand it, you know, like, which baff, baffles us, you know, really seriously, you guys need to write this shit down. It's fucking so obvious what's right and wrong. Um, but, you know, this is you kind of almost deciding what's right and wrong for them. So, and that's a soulmate connection. I think it's okay if the other person's okay. Obviously, it's the kind of thing can't be like the way it always is. Um, you know, this is someone probably came to you initially, like for help. So maybe kick it in too. It's like I can't be sleeping with my clients type of energy. And, uh, but on the other hand, you're like, there's something here. And so maybe you understand, like if you detach from it strategically, um, you know, and really parse it out, um, that there is a chance um, that this could turn into something in the future. And let me see. And look, we started out with the issue of reciprocation. And the issue of reciprocation here is that your person can't, they may want to, uh, but like they can't, they're in some kind of position where they need their own energy to deal with their own stuff and they just can't bring it the way you can energy wise. Again, that's why there's this delay. Let's see, Nine of Pentacles, I like it. And look what we end up with, the Nine of Pentacles. So I think what you end up here with, and it could be what's going on now, 
is a relationship which is a boyfriend girlfriend relationship boyfriend boyfriend girlfriend girlfriend whatever relationship where you're both uh, whole and happy and you have your own house your own job your own you know but you you uh, spend a night with each other and your boyfriend girlfriend I see that being kind of extended um, and even if you were to come together it's a little bit of the energy of you might work together um, but it's um, it's kind of this energy where you're both uh, like a, I will call it a Venus uh, in Aquarius energy you know uh, Venus in Sagittarius Venus in Aquarius where you know I'm not saying you you're necessarily you're not gonna have that being Leo but you know it, it's that energy where you really value your freedom and space and you know don't look at me I'm a Scorpio uh, Venus that's not my thing um, and you typically then you know would extend that uh, to your person you respect their uh, space and time and, and independence um, so it end up being that kind of a relationship and I do see you just basically kind of would be creating this relationship very much taking control of this but you're doing it in a divinely inspired way and I believe you understand that when you do this it, there's a, a transparency with your person on your person's part there's a lot of trust when that trust is there um, it's like you you wouldn't dare uh, if you're gonna cheat on someone not this one because then the karma would slay you because I think like if we take this license to go in and operate in someone else's life in this directive of a way it's like cross the line between being the helper the healer the therapist and become the lover you know uh, we're only human I got you know it's all you know you know what's right you don't need anybody in me you know but I'm just saying I'm not necessarily against that's not a great idea I understand why it shouldn't be done you know um, but you know the consequences so if you were to abuse this kind of power in any way, it would be tremendous. So, and I don't think that's a problem. So it's a very complex and um, fascinating and highly karmic uh, relationship here, uh, Leos. I love it, um, this reading. Uh, do comment, appreciate it. If uh, you can add anything, it helps the channel. Uh, like, thumbs up, helps the channel also. Uh, to uh, subscribe. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys.